Welcome to another episode of Just the Tip Tuesday, and welcome to our fitness journey. Isn't that right, Mike? Hey, I if we're talking <laughs> my whole fitness journey, are we talking when I was the fat kid who had uh, moobs the size of Twinkies when I was seven years old, or are we talking just this year? What are, what are we dealing with here, buddy? We're, we're- we're talking about your fitness journey you're on, on this backpacking through the neighborhoods of Coeur d'Alene in the middle of winter. I tell you what, it is, I love this topic. Um, I won't lie. The holidays were good. Uh, <laughs> I, I gained some pounds and by some, I mean like four cause I was trying to be really good. Um, but I, you know, I think this is that time of year that, you really test your mental fortitude with your training. I mean, we're doing, my youngest son, Griff and I are doing ice baths, believe it or not. I mean, we're not going to be able to, you know, because our ice tub is frozen solid because of the negative temperatures we've been having, but uh, it's going to warm back up. But we're doing ice baths, hot tubs, a lot of training. Uh, My wife thinks I'm absolutely ridiculous for what I'm doing. Um, I get done with this pack out challenge doing, you know, four five, six, seven miles, depending on what I feel like. And then I immediately hit the, uh, the upper body weight. And then I come and sit down and slowly feel my legs cramp up and start to seize on me. And it's, a, it's really a cool thing to experience, but you know, I, I'm, this is my idea for a podcast. Cause I think this is the time of year when most people it's sucks to work out especially if you have a garage gym it's cold you know there's a foot or two of snow on the ground if you don't have a garage heater you're wearing basically your snowsuit to lift weights and stuff but i think this is the time of year where you do you lay the foundation i mean i think new year's resolutions are bogus like oh i can't start a new diet or a new training regime until january stupid like just start working out now if you you know like do it when you, when you want to do it. But if you're a hunter and you're going to hunt this year, this is a foundational time to lay some fitness, whether that fitness is strength, whether that fitness is endurance or whether you're like, okay, I have moves like Mike did when he was eight years old, the size of Twinkies. I better get rid of those before I start actually really getting in shape. Pick your poison, man. And and, and go after it. It's perfect because, I mean, right after winter, we go into spring and then summer, mm-hmm. you know, where you want to look good. The summer bod going into swimming and the beach. and Hey, I tell you what, I my uh, my 14-year-old made me a bet that I would not have a six-pack on the boat. And he wasn't talking about Miller Lite. He said, Dad, there's no way you're going to have a six-pack this year on the boat being, you know, in your late 40s. And so I took that as a personal challenge. And uh I am hell bent to get rid of the dad bod and uh, and have one this year when we're out fishing and and hanging out on the boat before elk season starts. That's that's our thing. So yeah, it's no it's no secret. I mentioned it last podcast. I'm doing the pack out challenge. Check out Western Contours, pack them out apparel, Western Hunt Fest. It sucks, dude. It's it's not fun. I mean, I feel in better shape now than I did two weeks ago when when I started it. I mean, my hips are no longer sore. Um, my legs aren't quite cramping as much. I don't feel like I'm tearing my Achilles every time in the first mile. But uh, it sucks, dude. The last thing I want to do is put on a 50 pound pack and walk around. I mean, I'm not going the mountains, dude. I'm just walking around the damn neighborhood, and it sucks. It's it it has not been fun, and it's just mental fortitude. I feel like everything I do that sucks like that for half an hour, hour just makes things that suck in September a little bit less sucky. Right. I mean, it, it just it, iron sharpens iron. Right. But I'm right. not, I'm not one of those David Goggins types that thinks you should do everything in your life that sucks. Right. Like it's, that's no, you do a workout that really sucks And then go inside and enjoy some good food or some time with your family or like a hot tub sesh, like stuff that's fun too. So what are you doing? Uh, What are you doing to lay the foundation this year, bud? Are you, uh, are you hitting the gym? Are you, do you and Taylor have any ultra runs planned? What, uh, what's your fitness foundation that you're putting on for the next month and a half? Yeah, I, I go to a nice warm gym. That's what I do. Uh, but yeah, so we have some 
you I have some goals for this, you know, this spring and summer. We're signed up mm-hmm. for an ultra and mm-hmm. uh, another, you know, just marathon this year. Uh, and then you just add weightlifting to that. And so it's 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 pretty basic. I, I lift weights every day and I try to get in a run every day. I run the treadmill through the winter. Nothing's worse or than worse than going outside. In the, cold. Uh, the outside's horrible. So, <laughs> in addition to uh, this pack out challenge, I've uh, started and I'm pulling it up here on my phone right now. Um, Mountain Tough Fitness. Uh, I love that fitness app, and uh, I know you use it as well. Uh, their kettlebell diesel program. Dude, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I actually, I wanted to start it. I knew it was coming. I did their kettlebell 20 and I really liked it, but I did it with dumbbells. So I actually ordered a 53 pound kettlebell and then a 35 pound kettlebell. And I'm getting after that as well. Just <clears throat> different stuff, right? To get right. that the supporting muscles, everything going. So between the pack out challenge and the mountain tough fitness, the kettlebell diesel program, Um, I'm loving it. And I, I, I say stop drinking, but I do have the occasional beer at the brewery or glass of wine at dinner, but I pretty much for the most part cut out all the alcohol at the end of September last year. And I think I mentioned that a couple times and, uh, my fighting weight went from a legitimate, like always between 208 and 211 to, I have to really concentrate and eat a lot of food to be above 200 pounds just simply by cutting out like a beer a night or a glass of whiskey before bed or whatever. And don't get me wrong. If, if I'm out at a restaurant, someone's like, you want to have an old fashioned, like, yeah, I'm going to have an old fashioned, but like I cut all that stuff out and man, it's crazy. It's crazy how good you feel just tightening that stuff up. And then, uh, the other thing I, I tried, and I mentioned this, you know, about a month ago, I've, uh, I've tried eliminating all foods that are processed and that's hard as hell. Have you done that before? Yeah, this, I, I've started getting, cutting sugars. So just oh, yeah. not like your ketchup sugars, you know, not every sugar, just Correct. like Correct. just your treats after meals, like a Twinkie, you know, like, I love a, a cookie you know i've tried to cut i've been cutting all those things out and it is hard because it hits like 10 o'clock at night and you're just Tired. all you want is just a treat you know i i tell you i <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night i can tell you there are three things that i really want i want a glass of whiskey maybe a chew which i've been eliminating that as well and I would also love like some chips or Doritos or whatever. And so I've switched over. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have one of those fuzzy waters like LaCroix that tastes like the static on TV sounds, which is horrible. <laughs> and because I'm trying to only have food that has one ingredient in it, instead of doing that, I'll pick and like make like popcorn or something like that mm-hmm. and eat some popcorn, not popcorn with movie theater butter on it as delicious as that is, but <laughs> just trying to, trying to clean that up. And I can tell you right. even for breakfast, like potatoes and eggs and fruit or veggies, like getting rid of the English muffin and the bagel. I can't believe how much more food, not just that I can consume, but I have to consume to get that energy. Like my body, and I think everybody's body is going to burn through single ingredient food way faster than it burns through like a bagel or toast or jelly with multiple ingredients and stuff like that, that the body actually has has to actually break down. If you just put oatmeal in it, like you may be full and then 45 minutes later, you're like, man, I'm freaking hungry again because your body uses that food, (laughs) that fuel that's immediately available to it. Right. And so the past... uh, the past few weeks I've been doing that. And, uh, like I said, man, I'm, I'm on a mission to, uh, not have a dad bot on the boat this year. And, uh, same, I, I want, I want to have zero constraints in the elk woods and it starts, starts with laying the fitness foundation now, like putting the suck in now. And I figured even if we hate working out in the cold, right. 
like you, Ryan, you cut out sugars. Like that couldn't have been easy. Did you have the sugar hangover? No, not real. I don't eat a ton of sugars already, but yeah. it was amazing. I when I cut it out, I realized how much more sugar I was eating than I thought, though. Just because mm. I don't eat a lot, I was yeah. surprised with how much I actually still ate. You know, just kind of snacked here and there and grabbed, uh, yeah, a granola bar or you know some of these some of these items that I've cut out. But yeah. Uh, you know, well, and that's the thing is, is once you start working out, it, it does get easier. These things are, you know, seem hard. And I'm sure with your walking outside, you're seeing the benefits. And so it's getting easier and easier. Oh, yeah. To do that. It is. And, you know, whether we have the money or ability to go to gym, have a garage gym or whatever, we can start to tighten up our diet. Like, I feel the big movement this year. I mean, everybody loves beer. Everybody loves you know, a cocktail when they're out with their friends or whatnot. I saw a thing on the, uh, in the newspaper saying that they're expecting alcohol purchases like beer at breweries and stuff to be the lowest this year that it's been since 1999. Like, I feel like the, I feel like the cutting out alcohol or instead of going to the brewery and having three or four beers, like, the new movement is to like, yeah, I'll have one and then get out of there. Like, I feel like it's kind of a wave, it's, you know, and it's a good wave, right? It makes a makes a big difference. So no, it, it absolutely does. And it uh, and it just makes you meant more mentally tough. You know, when it when you do get to the woods and you mentally have to climb up the mountain. Oh, you know, yeah. Doing, doing these mentally tough things make it so that. When, you know, the really mentally tough, you know, climbing to the top of the mountain, uh, yep. going that extra mile isn't as hard. A hundred percent. The more you're, you put yourself in, in, in the suck cave yep. now, the less that cave sucks when you really need to get it done. Right. That's right. building that mental fortitude. Like, no, I don't need to go out and walk seven miles in five degree weather with a 50 pound back, but I'm going to do it. And it's just going to make it that much easier to do other things later that aren't going to be quite as fun. Right. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. no, my block, like I said, I, I finished, uh, I did an eight week. We have one of these fancy pants Peloton bikes in this office. Mm, nice. and that was a, that was a horrible, horrible eight week, like functional training power thing I did on it. That kind of kick started and I didn't want to mess those up. So I started eating cleaner and all that stuff. And I finished that and jumped right into the pack them out challenge. And now that is getting better and better. And now starting the uh, kettlebell diesel program, it's just kind of building and building and building. And I'm like, you know, these little like four, six, eight week challenges to make sure I do something and hold me accountable like, I don't need motivation. I don't need to watch probably just like you. You don't need to to get motivated to go run. You don't need to watch something on YouTube of somebody running, you know, telling you like, <laughs> like I love listening to David Goggins, like Instagram, but you don't need him screaming at you on YouTube to carry the boats or carry the logs or whatever <laughs> the hell he's yelling to like go out and run. Like, I don't need that. What I need is a little accountability, whether that's a program I'm doing or a training partner that's like, Hey, Ed Charles, get off your ass and go do it. Quit being lazy, yeah. right? Quit being a sure. bum. So I'm going to get through that kettlebell diesel um, and finish or, up this pack out. Go ahead. Well, and I was even just going to say, or setting that goal, you know, that, yes. that motivates you to the goal because I mean, that's the reason I've already signed up for an ultra marathon and a marathon is I'm committed now. And yeah. the last thing I want to do is show up yeah. heavy and out of shape. And I've done that before. I've signed up for races, shown up, and it was embarrassing, you know, the finish. And okay. and <laughs> and those, you know, that memory of doing those things uh, makes you want to do better the next time. And you sign up again so that you can have that motivation to run a little bit more than than you were doing because I'm not a natural runner. Running is not easy for me and I am still slow after doing it. But 
uh, I know it prepares me for the woods. It keeps me in shape and it's something that's hard. And so that's yeah. why I enjoy it is because it's something that's, uh, that's hard. That's not, doesn't come easy to me and I'm bound and determined to make it easy for me. Yep. <laughs> You know, it's still that's, not but <laughs> that's that thing like like we all say like do what sucks for a little bit and, and make it not suck right i mean although i will say like i will not run unless there's somebody with a knife chasing me and then i'll probably turn and fight them before i run like running i absolutely hate hate <laughs> i can't add enough hates behind that running like i do not like running so um what are you going to do while you're running, are you going to supplement with some weights and stuff like that? So you don't lose the, uh, the manly biceps that you have oh, there or what's your yeah, plan? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll try to keep, uh, weightlifting. Uh, I'll probably just do three days a week with, uh, and I'll run five days a week. Probably mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Uh, do a long run on Saturdays, try to get 13 miles or longer on Saturdays. I won't do that now. I won't start that till this spring. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. uh, and then the weekdays with my three days of working out, uh, just try to hit three miles. Mm -hmm. Just make sure to try to get one long run in a week and then three miles, maybe a sprint day with, uh, three days of, I'll probably do, uh, a push pull and, uh, a light leg day. Is oh, probably okay. what I do with lot with the with running so much and you want to talk about hating running running after a hard leg workout is worse than even running I mean it's it's next level and so Boy. light light leg day because you still need to have uh, room for your legs after you know for running but mm -hmm. that's that's probably will be my spring right now I'm hitting the gym five days a week and just running a couple miles on the treadmill to keep keep my heart working. I like it. I like it. Oh. You can't, you can't let the, uh, the muscle mass disappear totally just because you become a marathon runner, right? You don't want to, you don't want to be one of those. You don't want to lose that, uh, 200 or 185 pounds of <laughs> twisted steel that you got over there. To oh yeah. 150 well, pound marathon body. So I need a funny, a funny story. The last ultra marathon Taylor and I did together, we get up to the, t you know, the starting line and you know, there's all these real runners, you know, and yeah, and you know, Taylor's bigger than I am. And so I was like, man, Taylor, we're running with all these Mustangs. You're a Clydesdale and I'm the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and all the, all those Mustangs thought that was real funny. <laughs> they thought that was hilarious. Well, I promise that we wouldn't keep it. We have one minute. So over the next uh, the next two to three weeks, we're going to have some longer form podcasts. We're going to get uh, several guests on that uh, know the fitness routines and industries and can talk about it. So there'll be, you know, some longer podcasts coming up. Um, we'll supplement those because I think with that, I think what would be great is some um, just the tip Tuesdays with just some healthy, simple, straightforward recipes, right? We yeah, have them on Instagram, we have idea. them on the app, but we'll throw out, you know, over the next month with our guests, those will be long form. We're going to talk fitness. We're going to talk training. We're going to talk mental fortitude and consistency. And we're going to have some people that truly know their like, really know their stuff come on and that have been in the trenches and and know it um and then we'll supplement that with a little 10 15 minute you and i shooting a recipe back and forth here i'll give you a recipe maybe on the weekend and say try this and spice it up how you think and then i can give my recipe you can give your version of it and uh the listener can be like damn that sounds good i'm gonna pull that off the app next time Nope, so that sounds that sounds great. So guys, telling you it now is the time to prepare for summer <sighs> for sure, but to lay that groundwork for August, September, October hunts. Like if you get it done now, it's going to pay huge dividends and we're going to have some experts on to talk about that, help lead guide you in your fitness journey, give you some pointers, some things to think about 
And then uh, Mr. Smith and I will hop on and give you some simple recipes each week to to maybe make a bunch of at home so you can meal plan yep. and have some healthy food to eat along this uh, this journey of laying that fitness foundation. Absolutely. So I love it, brother. Thanks for the conversation. And everybody out there, thanks for listening. Shoot us uh, a message if you have any questions. And uh, each week before we have our guest on on Instagram, I'll uh, introduce who's coming on to get everybody stoked to make sure you put it on your calendars to listen. Perfect. So, thanks, right, guys. Babe. Thanks.